When Jesus preached in a synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth, he identified himself as the one in whom Isaiah's words would be fulfilled. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Isaiah 61, 1 and 2 and Luke 4, 18. Captives implies incarceration, while oppressed suggests bondage to a cruel master. According to Jesus, anyone who sins is held captive by sin, and according to Paul, all have sinned, Romans 3.23. Therefore, biblically speaking, all human beings are enslaved to sin, except those whom the Son of God has made free, John 8.32-36. In Galatians 5.1, Paul exhorts, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. There are only two ways to break the bonds of slavery to sin, and Christ has accomplished both. A captive or slave can find freedom through death or be purchased out of slavery by a new master. In Christ, both death to sin and life to a new uh, master are accomplished. Romans 6, 4. Those who have died to the old way of life are now the servants of the one who purchased us out of the marketplace of sin, with the cost of his own life, and we have become his spiritual slaves as a result. Therefore, slavery is not the issue. Rather, the issue is to whom or what one is enslaved. Ironically, as Jesus himself said, once we are set free by knowledge of the truth, we are free indeed, all the while being slaves to Christ. Being set free from slavery to sin is to be liberated from captivity and oppression into freedom in Christ. This is what enables his followers to obey him. When Paul speaks of not being saddled with a yoke of bondage in Galatians 5.1, he is using an agricultural metaphor that would have been familiar to his audience. Yoke reminds us of Jesus' invitation in Matthew 11.28-30, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus' statement also draws attention to the fact that the people of God are no longer under the bondage of the law. Jesus' hearers were burdened by the yoke of Jewish religious requirements. Burdens hard to bear, laid on men's shoulders. Matthew 23, 4. Oxen under the yoke and hardness are not free. Neither are human beings who are bound by laws. They cannot possibly keep by, by their own power. The law was a temporary tutor, attendant, or guardian to keep the immature in line until they encountered the life-giving Spirit of God in Jesus Christ. Galatians 3.24 once, <clears throat> once the Spirit enters in, the law is dismissed, and the Spirit takes over as guide and counselor, leading the Christian to do the will of God from the heart. Ephesians 6.6 6. Those who walk freely in Christ live under the control of the Holy Spirit, who provides the very kind of life that the law pointed to but could never produce. By the Spirit, they also learn that liberty, freedom, is not license. We are not set free in order to have the prerogative to do whatever we want, but the power to do what we ought. True spiritual freedom means that we submit our own desires to that which is best for others. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. 1 Corinthians 10, 23-24 This is the way of liberty, the way of freedom in Christ.